What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Sporting. Today we have Benfica in the league and Ren in the Champions League group stage. We look at the league table, we're sitting fourth, but we have games in hand on every team above us, at least one game in hand. And we wouldn't go top if we wouldn't win against Benfica today. We'd be one point behind them still, but we would still have a game in hand. So we would be the presumptive leaders if we can win that game in hand. So a win today is pretty huge against Benfica. If we lose, they take a pretty commanding lead at the top of the table. Uh, Ren, in the group stage, we are currently sitting top. We've played each team once. We've got two wins and a draw. We are equal on points with Inter, but we lead because we have the away draw. So, yeah, the group's going pretty well. Ren, who we're playing today, is currently bottom of the group on zero points. So this is a match we need to be winning. Uh, recent results have been pretty good, too. We've played four games, and we've had four clean sheets. So, and... Quite a few goals. And we played Ren and Porto in there. So, pretty good results. We started off against Belenenses. They're like in the fourth division. And we put out a completely backup squad. Some, even some regions in there. Uh, Roberto Montiel, you might know. He got a 9.7. Guy we signed from Argentina. Young young attacking midfielder. He had a good good debut. Pretty sure that's his first game for the club. And he gets a 9.7. So, five goals. Montiel did get the first goal as well. Colomuani and Guillermo Santos. Player you probably don't know. Scored a hat trick. He's coming up to the first team this year, not to be a real big part of the first team, but mostly just for mentoring and the odd game. And this is the odd game he got, and he got a hat trick in it. He's a midfielder. I played him at that Mazzala role. I think he's a very good Mazzala on attack and four and a half star potential. So he could be a long term option for us in that Mazzala role. Uh, the next game we played against Ren at home in the Champions League group. We won 2 0. Inacio with a goal, Tabata with a goal. Good win. Full first team, and we played pretty well. So. Yeah, pretty dominating victory. And then probably the best result, a 1-0 win over Porto. Porto not having the best start to the season, but it's always going to be a hard match against Porto. We definitely should have scored more, too. We were the much better team, but we could only find the one goal. We didn't have Benjamin Sesco for any of these matches, either. So, I mean, the, the fact we got all those good results without probably our best attacking player is pretty good. The last game before today, we played Santa Clara in the Allianz Cup. Again, like Santa Clara aren't a great team, either, but we don't care about this cup at all. So I played even, I think, even worse backups in this one. Uh, River de Niera played, you might remember, we just signed a left back. Argentinian as well. He came in and played and played pretty well. Uh, so he came in, and then Guillermo Santos started again, had an eight. Uh, I think everyone else is kind of the same players that played the last one. Montiel played again. We did have Joao Corral, another region for us, another midfielder, playing as a deep line playmaker. He came in and got a 7.7 .7 off the bench. And he got a goal. And you're going to have to see that goal because it might be goal of the season. I'll show you Jao Corral right now. I'm pretty sure he came through our youth intake. He did. Only four-star potential, but I mean, he's got some good numbers in there. His physicals are really poor, which is why I'm playing him as that deep line playmaker. Definitely can't play on the wings. So, I gave him a chance and he, yeah, like I said, he scored one of the goals of the season. Let's get to it. Let's see this goal. I think we're going to have to show all five if we're going to show all of them. You can't. Before, you could be able to click on the timestamp, and it would bring up just that goal, but it does not work anymore. So you have to go to watch goals. You might see a little bit of a trend in these first three, three goals we score. It's pretty subtle, but you might just be able to pick it out. So the first goal, Abisher with the corner. Segovia at the back post. Header, 1-0. Second goal, Abisher with the corner. Back post, Segovia, 2-0. Third, a little bit different. Abisher from the corner. Back post. This time, I think it's DK getting the goal. I don't know if you could, could have spot that. It's pretty subtle, but definitely a, you know something similar between those three goals. Then a river in the air gets an assist to Colo Muani. Good cross. And then what might be the goal of the season? Corral from a free kick from very far out. Look at the whip on that. He's 17 years old. What a freaking goal. That was ridiculous. I jumped out of my seat when I saw that. For... You know, making one of his first appearances. I think he played against Belenenses as well. He came off the bench. Played well. Didn't get that goal. But yeah, what a goal for that was. So that set up, sets us up for this Benfica and Ren match. We do have Sesco back. So that's very good. That's very important. And we've got everyone back. We have no injuries. We have no suspensions. The entire first team is available to us. So if we're ever going to beat them, now's the time to do it. So Sesco and Sorloth up top, both playing pretty well. So we lost 7.58 in his last five. 7.37 on the season so far. Sesco just ridiculous. Tabata still playing really well. Nunez, probably the lowest performer on the team, but 
he's doing his job. It's hard to get good ratings from a deep line playmaker. Gonzalez having a pretty good season. Polina, Burgundy, Johannes, and Anasio. Ruan, who's come in, has actually played pretty well. 7.14 average rating. So I wasn't too sure if he'd really be that much of an improvement over Caceres, but he's done well so far. So that's good to see. Aguilar and Hugo Souza have been just as good as he was last year. So the entire first team is available. I really want to beat Benfica. I want to win this league again, and I don't want it to be as nervy as it was last season. So let's see if we can beat them today and maybe try to establish a lead over the course of the rest of the season. This is our chance to exact revenge on Benfica after our last experience against them. Let's show them who we really are. Last year, we had to rely on them dropping points for us to win the league. I don't want that to happen this year. I want to take control of this league right now. If we win this match, we control our own destiny. That's what I want to see. 18 minutes in and we have our first highlight. There's only been two shots in the game and they've both been for us. So decent start, but none of them apparently been noteworthy. Nunez is going to have a chance to score a goal, and he does. Pretty sure that's his first goal of the season. It doesn't show up, but I'm pretty sure it's his first goal of the season. And it's Alexander Sorloth getting the assist. Good to see him being involved, not just scoring goals, but creating for others as well. Bergwijn Johansson out to Sorloth. Going to chest it down. A nice chest down. Gets a lot of space to run into. Finds Mateus Nunez. Looked like that went through. I'm guessing that's Pablo Mari. Looked like it went straight through him, but I'll take it. Another highlight, this is going to be a corner for Benfica. João Mario is going to swing it in, but uh, Sorloff doing his defensive duties as well. Clean tackle. I was worried for a second, but that was a clean tackle. But Sorloff, good to see him doing defensive duties as well as assisting in the attack. Mari back to Grimaldo, who is probably their danger man. He's been the best left back in the league the past three years. So we really need to worry about his crosses into the box. But Inacio heads this one away. But they do, they're not going to stop coming. They're going to come again down this right-hand side. Gonzalez is on the ball. Into João Mario. Ball. Gedson Fernandez heads it just wide. So that was the first half. We have completely dominated. They don't have a shot on target. We have the possession advantage. We're five minutes over, and yet the game's still going on. I don't understand what's going on there. I didn't see an injury, but if they score here, he might have been offside. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was offside, but I'm not confident. If they would have scored there five minutes past what should have been played. I would have been a little bit frustrated with that. Please be offside. Thank you. T entirely undeserved as well. They've done nothing. So, yeah, they, let's see how far off. Yeah, he's pretty far off. Gets it, swings it in, but Darwin very far off. Gets the advantage. Just creeps in off the post. But we're going to go into halftime with a 1 0 advantage. Corner of the XG is pretty fair, but I mean, with 11 shots, 7 on target. I'd like to score more than one goal with that because we not might not be able to repl replicate that in the second half. And I think we're going to need another goal. It's important to stay focused in this second half. Don't allow complacency to creep in. They're really going to be pushing for it in the second half. And we're probably going to need another goal. So don't take your foot off the gas. 77 minutes in and Bergman Johansson, who had that bruise before, is now going to have to come off. I don't think it's going to be serious. It's annoying that it's going to force him off the pitch, but I don't think it's actually serious, unless it's a different injury altogether, but I'm assuming it's just that bruise that, I don't know, for some reason he has to come off now. Sky will come on. We're getting close to the end of the match. 77th minute, not much has happened. Uh, in terms of performances, no one's really played poorly other than Sesco. So, I don't know if i take him off for Tomas. <sighs> I mean, Tomas, when he's come on, has proved to be a difference maker, so I might actually do that. Ruben Aguilar on a yellow as well. Tired and not playing particularly well. Could bring Dyer in for him. I do think it'll make the defensive change. I think that makes more sense. If they score, then I might bring on Thiago Tomas. We're needing fresh legs to try to score a goal. But right now, I want to focus more about being strong defensively. So Dyer's going to come in at right back. This guy is going to stay at left back. I can make some slight alterations to the tactic. We're going to go full backs on support on both sides. Be a little bit more reserved. Uh, other than that, I'm going to start wasting time a little bit. But I think that's the only changes I'm going to make. I want to keep playing our style of game. It's held them without a goal so far, so I don't want to change it up altogether. All right, 88th minute, and time to make our last sub. I'm not going to look to score now. I'm just looking to stay strong defensively, so we're going full defensive. Not full defensive, but we're going to go more defensive. And that change, I mean, I don't know who's going to come off. Sesco's improved a little bit in the second half of this. I mean, Nunez has played really well, but he's on a yellow. I'd like our midfielders to not be on a yellow just so they be, can be a little bit more physical. Ugar, uh, Bragancha is better defensively as well, so I think that's going to be the change. Bragancha comes in, is going to play on defend. 
I'm going to put Gonzalez on support. And other than that, Dyer's on a yellow. That's not great. Uh, I'm going to fully waste time now. I'm still going to play. Like I don't like to play lower tempo with this team because I just don't think it fits our style. So I'm still going to look to play our style of game. I'm not going to change everything up just because we're trying to hold on to the ball. I'm just going to waste time. I'm going to play out of defense. I will make that change. Uh, I stopped distributing quickly. I think I want to do everything else here. I still think we can kick it long because we got the two big men up top. So I don't want to restrict what we're able to do there. Uh, it's, I don't want to prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I will start marking tighter because they're going to be looking to take more shots whenever there's an open opportunity. So I don't want to give them an open opportunity. So, And I'll go to cautious. Those will be the changes I make. Hopefully we can hold on to this lead. We probably deserve it. We've been the better team for this game. Two minutes left, and it looks like we're going to get through, but there's going to be one last highlight. This would be an absolute shot to the heart if they score here. We have defended magnificently for 94 minutes in the... I think he's off. They do score, but I'm pretty sure, just like last time, they are off sides. He looked pretty far off. I think this will be coming back. It's not. He was not offside. That is so frustrating. Another la Like the last time we played them, it was a last-second goal to give him the winner. Oh, he's definitely on. He's way on. It's a last-second goal to equalize. That they just... I mean, maybe they deserve it. They've been much better this second half. Nine shots to seven. They've taken possession into their advantage. They've still not got many shots on target, but they have one XG. We probably should have scored another one. I think a lot of this is down to us not find finding a way to score a second goal. I, mean, I said it going in, I thought we would need another goal, and it turned out to be true. It's annoying that it lasts until the last freaking minute of the game, but... And time's already over, so I'm not even going to try to go attacking. Just see this game out. Super frustrating to just give it away like that at the very end. Like, just no one marking their midfielder in the box at the back post in the most crucial part of the match. A lot of yellows for Benfica. We had a decent number as well. But, I mean, maybe 1-1 one -one draws fair, but... We had double their shots on target. We had only one more half chance. That might have been a fair result, but I mean, we really needed to win that match. This is kind of a killer. I'm extremely disappointed. We should have won that match based on the chances created. I told you at halftime, we would most likely need another goal. I'm not going to blame the defense for that dropping of two points. We knew they're going to push forward for that entire game. And it's frustrating defend so well for 94 minutes to have one lapse, but that just shows against teams like Benfica, you have to be on your game for every single second. One mental lapse and they will score. But this isn't on that. This is on our inability to take our chances and put them away when we have the chance. Your team conceded an extremely late goal today to cost you a result. Were you surprised that so much stoppage time was added? I can't concern myself with what with that, when we fail to see the game out, we have to focus on correcting our own mistakes first. As a Lisbon lad, Jao Polina is no stranger to the rivalry with Benfica. How important is it to have players that understand the passion of the, these derby games? Uh, there's definitely an extra incentive for them. And I think we all saw that today. <sighs> it's not, yeah, we knew they were probably going to score. It's, a, it's frustrating. It was literally the, the last kick of the game, but they've been ridiculous to start the season. They were going to score, it, but we should have scored more than one goal. It's, again, the attack not showing up whatsoever. We had so many chances. What, 18 shots, 19 shots on target, something like that? And we could only manage one goal? That is frustrating because it's nothing has changed. It's the same problems we had last year. We're creating a bunch of chances. We just are still incapable of scoring. I don't understand. As I expected, Bergman Johansson's injury is only just the bruised ankle, so he's only out one to three days. So he should be back for this Ren match. He might not be full fitness, so he might not be able to start. But we'll see. We'll see. He'll probably be close. So we don't have any games in between. Ren's coming up next. It is the away leg. If I can get this. It's so annoying how it does that. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be the away leg. We won the home leg. What, 2-0? But I'm pretty sure we just absolutely destroyed them. Let's look at the match. I'm pretty sure it was pretty yeah. 20 shots, 11 on target to 4-3. and three. So 0 .07 XG. We should be winning this match. I don't care if it's away from home. We are the much better team. And if we have any chance of winning this group, Inter aren't dropping points either. If we have any chance of winning this group, we have to win this match. And we are back for the Rin match. In between games, I set up chance conversion for pretty much every single day of the month. 
It seemed to work last year. After I made that change, we started scoring again. So I'm not going to wait until it becomes a glaring major issue. I'm just going to do it now. I'm going to try to get ahead of it and see if we can get back to scoring goals. We weren't too bad before that. Like, it was, there was a couple games where we probably should have scored more than we did, but that game was, it was glaringly obvious we needed to score more, and we just were completely incapable. So hopefully this can make a difference. We've only had one chance conversion training session between the last match and this one, because there's only three days in between. But we'll see if it pays off over the course of the rest of the month. If I need it for the next month, I'll do it, because it's literally the last thing I think I can do that I have influence over, that can get this team to score goals. In terms of team sheet, there's only been one change. I was wondering if he wouldn't be, and Bergen Johansson is not fully fit for this match. So Vinagre is going to come in and play left back. I think that's fine. Vinagre is a solid player. He had a really good season last year. He hasn't played a whole lot this year yet. But he was, started, he was injured at the start of the season as well, so that was kind of part of the reason. But he's in. He's going to play left back for us. Other than that, it's the exact same team that played the last game, including the same bench. Let's hope we can score some more goals this time, though. Ren have lost three in a row, so we have no excuse to not get a win here. Saying that we're going to need to be better in front of goal. We have not converted nearly enough of our chances recently. I'm not going to wait until it becomes a major issue. We're going to have to see change, and we're going to see it starting today. How do you approach this match with both teams in good form and head of kickoff? Uh, I was told they just lost three in a row, so one of you is lying. Uh, we're going to have to be at our very best to get something today. Ren are as good as they come and will certainly be able to cause us one or two problems. Can you explain Bergman Johansson's absence today? He isn't injured as far as we know. He's not fit. He's just being rested. Looks like Ruan might be out to play. Nope. Nope. Same role he's played for us all season. That, that question is so dumb. Yeah, they've definitely not lost three in a row. Maybe they're, I guess they're saying just in the group stage because they have lost three straight group stage matches. I'm assuming that's what they were kind of inferring. So, I do agree there that we should be able to take advantage of that. But our form has been pretty good. Four wins and a draw. And the one draw was against Benfica, but it probably should have also been a win. First highlight's going to be a goal kick for Ren, six minutes in. If we can win this, but we're not. Laborde's going to win it, but that looked like a foul, but apparently not. A good clean tackle, and Sesco is through on goal. This is the chance we need to be finishing. There he goes. That is the kind of chance we need to be putting away. One-on-ones. We're not going to get a lot of them, but we should be scoring the ones we get. At least with more frequency, because we've seen to be missing every single one-on-one -on -one over the past two seasons. Nice through ball by Tabata. It's been so good for us. And Sesco goes to the right of the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. Never stood a chance. Good finish. Good to see. This might be the last highlight before halftime. 43rd minute. Ren have yet to do basically anything in this match. I think they have like two shots on target, but like only like 0.17 XG. Sorloth is through this time, and he's going to finish it. Yes! What I wanted to see, is, is it just chance conversion? Because if it's not, I have no idea what, what is going on. Because we tried to just see if the players would you know, be able to fix it and find a way to score last year, and it, nothing changed. We went to chance conversion training, and it seemed to you know, impact it immediately. And we've done the same, and we've now scored two one-on-ones. Both one-on-one -on -one opportunities we've given, we've been put putting away. And so and that's at least good to see. I mean, maybe that's something if you're struggling with that too. If you're struggling with the goals, Try chance conversion training. Try to make it almost every single available slot. Just throw it in there because it seems to have an impact. We've had a lot of shots and targets so far, so I'm happy. Defensively, we've been solid as ever. But it's good to see going forward. You've been given two really good chances, and you've taken both of them. That's not something we've been doing nearly consistently enough. So it's good to see you improving there. I'm proud of the effort you've put in. But that's not something that's just going to change for just today. You need to keep that going into the second half, and into the rest of this season. First highlight of the second half is going to come in the 58th minute. It's going to be a deep free kick for us. We're on to take it. We're going to play it all the way back to the keeper. Hugo Souza outside of the box. No no one hurrying him though. So he has all the time in the world to find Inacio. He's going to look long for Tabata. He's going to head it down. He's going to fall to Sesco. Another one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And this one off the post. Not bad. I can't, can't be too harsh on him for that. That was a decent chance. A decent shot. Just off the outside of the post. Closer than we've been. So it's good to see. And we're going to have a throw-in for Rin this time. This might be one of their first attacks that's been a highlight, if it is their attack. Traore coming down this left-hand side, or our left-hand side. Looks like he's going to try to put in a cross. He's going to go back to Santa Maria instead. He's going to put it across to Akpa Akpro. Good name. He's on a yellow, so he has to be a little bit cautious. They're going to find Traore again down their right-hand side. They're looking for a cross-in. If we can get an interception and kind of go on a counterattack. They are going to get a cross-in, but Ruan does as good as always, gets the ball cleared. 
definitely a big advantage that we have this year with Ruan in there instead of Caceres. That ooh, good chance that everything's not you know falling on the shoulders of Inacio. Ruan can win his aerial duels as well. I think that's been a big difference for us. Seventy fifth minute, and looks like we got some tired legs out there. I will, see, yeah, a lot of tired legs out there. We did not have a whole lot of game time between this game and the last one. We've got a two 0 lead, so I think I'm going to take off some important players. Uh, which might be Sesco. Even though he is does need match sharpness coming off that injury, I do not want to risk him getting injured. So I'm going to take him off, bring on Tomas. And I'll make a second change, I think. It's going to be one of these midfielders. I mean, the way Gonzalez has played this season, he's been a pretty key player for us. I'm going to bring in Ugarte. And I need to make one change to the set pieces. I'll switch Tomas and Sorloth around. But see if we get any more highlights in the rest of this match. We are going to get a highlight. It's going to come in the 84th minute, though, and it's going to be a corner that gets headed away. If we can get on the end of this, I think we will. Inacio's going to get there. Just ahead of Akpa Akpro. Back to Aguilar, into Ruan. Polina, I'd like to score another goal. I think we're going to be okay. 84th minute, we're up 2-0, and they haven't done anything all game. Aguilar's going to get a rare chance, and he's going to convert it. Aguilar has not scored many goals for us, but he gets one there. Good opportunity. He actually took it. Kind of rounded the keeper a little bit. Found the bottom corner. Now we can make our last sub without any worry because we are going to win this match um i think it's gonna be bruno tabata he is more fit than a lot of other players but he's been so good and i want to give nuno santos some more game time at that attacking field position get him a little bit more natural with it so i'm gonna make that change there's a lot of important players i'd like to sub out like anasio like Polina, but i think i'm gonna risk him i think i think it's more important to get bruno tabata out of there he's been one of our best players I'm not going to bother wasting time or anything. If, if we can score more goals, I'm all for that. Goal difference could be a thing. Because we are on the same amount of points as Inter right now. And I'm assuming they're going to beat Zenit. Two minutes to go, and it looks like we're going to end 3-0 to the good. We won 2-0 at home. We did even better away from home. 19 shots, 8 on target. Converting our chances is much better. I mean, with 19 shots, I'd still like a few more of those shots on target. But can't complain too much when we score three goals. They probably did deserve one. They had... 10 shots, but again, they didn't put nearly enough shots in target. Their XG was decent. They had one clear-cut chance and one half chance, but we had three clear-cut chances and four half chances. Seeing that, maybe we should have scored a little bit more. But not a bad performance. Sesco gets a goal, plays well. Sorloth gets a goal, plays well. And Aguilar gets a goal. Uh, Pelini gets an assist. Tabata gets an assist. Of course, he gets so many freaking assists. I think Pedro Gonzalez is actually leading our assists right now, though. Usually, it's been Tabata. Past two seasons, it's been Bruno Tabata. But Gonzalez has kind of taken his mantle a little bit. But I still think at the end of the season, Tabata's probably going to be our assist king. I'm very happy with the result and the way you played. I'm proud of your effort out there. It's never easy to win away from home in the Champions League. But I thought you handled the situation perfectly. I'm proud of what you did going forward. I asked for you to be better, and you were better at converting the chances you were given. But this is not a one-off. We need to build from this. We need to be even better because we can be even better. You've been on a good run lately, but that was something else. We're playing well. Long may it continue. Morale seems to be really high right now. How far can that take you? If we can build on these good times, I'll be very happy. Good morale is so important. How important is Benjamin Sesco's early goal in setting the tone for the rest of the match? Uh, the goal settled us down and allowed us to play the, our game with confidence. Sure. Uh, the other results, Porto drew with PSG. It's a big result for them. Sancho, or uh, Man United with Sancho. Beat Young Boys 3 0. Lilico Madrid beat Salzburg. Roma beat Leverkusen. Barcelona beat Bodo Glimt. Looks like no big shocks. It actually was a nil nil draw between Inter and Zenit. That is big. That is very big for our chances of topping this group. I did not expect them to really drop any points. So, two drop points is massive. But we need to beat Zenit. And then, I think at least a draw with Inter and we're fine. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out. But it puts us in a lot better position. So, I'm very happy to see that. Bruno Tabata, man of the match, two assists, five key passes, and just covered a decent amount of distance. He doesn't look exceptional by the numbers, but some players just play well. doesn't matter what the numbers say, they just play well, and he's one of those players. He has 11 off the ball, 14 passing, and yet he's leading our team in assists every single year. I thought coming into this team that Nuno Santos was going to be the superior player. He, I mean, If you look at the numbers, he has the superior numbers. His dribbling first touch aren't quite as good, but he's a better passer, better technique. His mentals are better. He's better physically, better off the ball. But Tabata's clearly the better player. And he's 
showed that over the course of my entire time here. Uh, in terms of when we're coming back, I think it's going to be for the last game in the Champions League group stage, Inter Milan. Like we said, they just dropped, dropped points, so we're currently two points ahead of them. We need to beat Zenit, but if they drop any points against Ren, we're basically through top of the group. So that draw was huge for us, but we do have Zenit coming up in a couple days against, uh, against Zenit away from home. Other matches aren't too huge. Aruka, who aren't very good and are about to fire their manager. Ferenc, who got relegated last year. And Vizella, who are 15th. I think I'm going to come back for more rents as well. Portimonens, 7th. But more rents are currently in 3rd. So, they had a good end of the last season. They actually made it to the Tachita Portugal final against us. We did destroy them. But they at least made it to the final. So, Inter and more rents will be next episode. I hope you enjoyed it because that is the end of this episode. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.